Hello everyone, I hope you're having a good day. So today we're going to go over the settings that you can change in Starbase that will really make a difference and a little bit of something you can change on your laborer to save you a lot more fuel. So let's go into our endo and right into the settings. So we're going to start in gameplay. So the first thing that might be helpful to change, it depends on what you like, is allowing weapons while seated. So you can shoot while you're seated, it's simple as that, and it is kind of helpful sometimes if you want to run and gun in your spaceship and you don't have a big weapon. So we'll skip past mouse interactions and ma mouse grabbing, and but we'll end up right on camera. So right here, you're going to see these two. I have these checked, but by default, they are not checked. And I'm going to show you what they do. So these are easily some of my favorite YOLOL things that you can do. So those commands, essentially what they do is they zoom you in on a YOLOL chip when you're editing it. So you can do this just like that. It's super easy, super nice, and it fixes everything instead of just having your YOLOL chip like this. That's sad. Don't do that. Enable these bad boys. Then we're going to go on to lifeline. So from top to bottom, the first thing you're going to want to do is right here, the fourth one down. Show lifeline indicator only when its status changes. Make sure that is off. Make sure it is not checked. You do not want that. In the top right, even though it's a little obscured by the despawn thing, so we'll just get rid of that, you'll see, okay, now I can't have it because there was a ship there. But anyways, when you're, when you're tethered to a ship, it's going to tell you always when you're tethered to a ship. Normally, what it'll do is it will disappear after a little bit of time. And so you want to have it always there so you know if you're tethered or not. Because you'll end up forgetting sometimes and it won't be fun. Then you're going to go up here. Lifeline range, totally pure, whatever you want it to be. I like it at 100, but it's how far the lifeline will grab you when you go that far away. Then, if you're getting grabbed by ships that are passing by because your lifeline keeps binding the, to them, you can disable, create lifeline bind automatically, or just turn the range down a lot. And that'll really help you out. Then, in ships and safe zones, so first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to host your own ships. So this makes sure that you get the most responsive time. Now, if somebody else is piloting your ship, you might want to disable it, so that way they'll have a better piloting experience. Then you want to allow hosted ships to leave safe zones. So that's just so you can leave the safe zone. Really handy, really nice to have. Then in your tutorial, if you've ever been bugged by your tutorial not being finished for some reason, or you just want to skip it, not get the free ship, you know, whatever reason, you can hit this box right here and it'll disable it. All neat, all nice. Then nothing in tool options we really need to look at, but we'll go to transponders. So in transponders, you're going to see a lot of sliders. So the first thing we're going to do is the amount of received signals. There can be a lot of signals. You can go up to 50 or down to zero. I like to keep mine at 10. And then you receive signal range in kilometers. So I like to see my transponders out really far. But then everything down from here is up to your choice. I like to have signals from unknown players higher, just so I know if somebody random is coming towards me. It's all personal preference preference. Then in station transponders, the amount of signals received, I like to have that up. Again, personal preference. Then in received signals from own stations, just have it at three. If you have three stations down, you know, you want to see where they are. But again, a lot of these are just what you want to do and what you want to see. Same with station transponder range, hiding transponder signals, and the speed limit. Now the speed limit this is something I do change a lot. So right now when I'm walking around, I'm not going to see any straight station transponders. But if I turn it down to zero and we look around, we'll see some stations and we'll start seeing those all around. So personal preference, it's basically meant to keep you from seeing stations while you're walking around. And then distance for hiding station transponder signals. If you go to small stations a lot, feel free to turn that down. It'll keep it so that you can see the station when you're close in. 
but on big station it does suck to have that down lower so again you just want to kind of figure out what stations you're going to be going to with that one then controls so player movement we don't care about that it's pretty standard everything should be set but you might want to make a couple of your own keybinds here what we're going to do is we're going to go down to ship controls so i haven't set this yet and yeah it's been an issue so the first thing you're going to see is roll left roll light right yaw left yaw right so you're going to notice roll is a roll is also d so roll left is a roll right is d for most players that's a little bit off you want that to be q and e so that's one of the things you're going to want to set and i'm actually going to do that now so to reset you just click and then you press the button and so I just rebound so that my yaw is A and D and my roll is Q and E. Easy stuff like that. Then in your spaceship designer, in auto saving and MUUS. So one thing that's nice to have is your multi-user undo system history very long. Now it's default at a hundred. Now if you're going to be doing a lot of changing, what you, as in like control Z's or looking back in what you've done, you might want to extend this a little bit more so that you can go back into the history. Otherwise you won't be able to. And then if you crash a lot or if you don't, you can change your autosave interval here. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go down to our graphics. So the first thing is since CA, the FPS limit has been enabled as a option. So you can turn that on and limit it to whatever you'd like, or you can have your V-Sync enabled. Then one thing down here that is really nice for screenshots, uh, as it says over in the tooltip, and is just kind of fun to look around in, is depth of field. So this is something you don't see often in Starbase, but it looks quite beautiful when you're looking around. You can spawn in a ship, and you can get some really nice screenshots of it up close. and it just really puts things into focus. It's really pretty to have. So that's something you can toy around with if you're a shipbuilder or if you're just looking to get some cool ship pictures. So we'll leave that off for now. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down to audio and this is unchecked by default, but if you have headphones, you might wanna enable headphone mode. It enables 3D audio spatialization. So it's nice. Then that's really it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go on to the part where I show you what I've tweaked on my laborer that will really help out and for all of you new players will really make a difference in how long your laborer lasts. So keep in mind after I've made this modification I've had this laborer for at least two three days I haven't swapped out the fuel rod once so and that's because this generator uses way too much fuel so normally the generator rate is set at 100 you don't want that this laborer only needs 22 to 23 to run at full throttle and still be able to recharge its batteries so sim how do you change this so what you're going to do is you're going to come up here now you're going to go to your generator button you're going to press u and that will bring up your little tool here now you're going to press tab to enable mouse mode now you might be in blueprint mode so in that case just switch over to data and then you'll have to reselect your generator so then what you do is you go to your on button on state value you go over here you click you press your backspace and you set it equal to 23 or 22 it's personal preference if you'd like 22 or 23 23 charges it a little bit faster and when you're maneuvering around at full throttle it won't drain your batteries a little bit whereas 22 your batteries will drain a little bit but again personal preference then what you're gonna want to do to essentially commit the changes is you'll hit enter then you'll press U, and you'll want to click your button again and then that will make sure the limit is applied to your generator and if you do use your laborer for so long where your fuel rod does end up needing to be swapped out you can pick up these so in the back you have four extra fuel rods and those can be used to well replace your one fuel rod and that's that's quite handy i've noticed a lot of people didn't know those were back there and have been wondering where they're going to get extra fuel rods and for a while that's where you get them 
So, in that case, I'd like to thank you all for watching. I hope you all learn a little bit of something and that you might have found a new setting that will forever change how you look at Starbase. But so yeah, thank you all for watching and I hope you have a good rest of your day.